So some opportunities for some of the younger players within the New Zealand squad, and we might see a few more debuts as well. Hassett, not the only player that has left since the opening game of the week. Grace Neville, who made her debut at right back and did pretty well, has departed back to England, and uh, Ashley Ward drops to the bench for this one today. Jale has it down the right side for New Zealand as they look to try and build and maybe keep a little bit more possession. They were out-possessed quite heavily, even during almost, that first half. Yeah, uh, almost 75 to 25% yeah. is what I think the, the overall s statistic was after 90 minutes. Done rolling this one back. It's a back pairing of Germa alongside Cook today. And the ball immediately played over the top for Ashley Hatch to chase onto, but Erin Naylor is quickly out towards the edge of the penalty area. And that is the seam we were highlighting in the pregame show that is open all day. It was in that last game, but you can see the space. If they can thread that pass, beats the entire midfield line. Sanchez on the half turn, and there she is over the top to Ashley Hatch. So much success in the second half of that first game with that ball and that positioning. Hatch, of course, the NWSL golden boot winner back in 2021. Sullivan back in the side today, pushing that one forward down the left, and Mallory Swanson giving chase. I think uh, New Zealand were expecting a throw in there. There will be one now. The referee today is Lara Lee from Queensland, an Australian who was the fourth official here for the match between these two teams a few days ago. Hatch trying to turn here on the edge of the box as it comes back out for Lavelle. Nicely done there by Rose Lavelle. Finds Swanson just inside the box. The way opens up, and if she hadn't just lost her footing there, you could just see her try to curl that one in the far corner. <laughs> you could. It was the perfect camera angle for that one. Left planted foot here. Cuts inside, creates that little window of space and loses her footing. But again, created in the midfield by Rose Lavelle, finding the space and creating space for herself to get Swanson in. There is Laura Lee, the referee. It's her first US senior game in charge. But she was a referee at the Under-20 Women's World Cup last year, including taking charge of the 3-0 win for the US against Ghana. Back with Erin Naylor, the veteran keeper, her 80th appearance for her country today. This is Ali Riley down the right side. New Zealand finding it difficult to get out here as that ball is crossed into the middle and dangerous defending for a moment there. Liz Anton able to get it away under some pressure. And they're already pegged back inside their own final third New Zealand here as the US look to start in much brighter fashion. Hatch turning it inside here for Ashley Sanchez into the path of Crystal Dunn. The Thorns defender linking up with Swanson who got those two goals in the first game between these teams for now 27 for her country and a much better first few minutes for the united states in contrast to that first game where everything felt a little bit underwater again it had been eight weeks since the united states had played and understandably january can be a little bit sluggish to begin with but that took even a moving across the back it's faster yeah. isn't it you can see early on here swanson chasing down the left side gets the cross into the middle and New Zealand try to scramble it away here as Ali Green will clear down that right side. But we've already seen Mallory Swanson involved down this left touchline. There was some talk about the pitch the other night, and Flatko Andonovsky described it as a sticky pitch, difficult to move the ball. The grass wasn't watered just before kickoff. Nor at halftime. And it did. It looked a little bit long. You could tell everything was a little slower because of it. This, they were watering the pitch before the game. Here is Sanchez, just got caught there, but it's picked up by Sullivan, who's moving forward. Sanchez is still down. Jale will play it towards halfway, as Lara Lee will call a halt to this one in the fifth minute of play between New Zealand and the United States. The US will open Group E here at the Women's World Cup against Vietnam in this stadium on July 22nd. You just see her getting caught there as the challenge came in from Olivia Chance, the Celtic midfielder who plays a little more centrally tonight.
Vietnam first, then the Netherlands in Wellington, and then the third group game will be here in this stadium against the winner of the Inter-Confederation playoffs. They'll find out next month who that will be. Auckland and Hamilton in New Zealand hosting those Inter-Confederation playoffs. And the uh, US will play the winner from Group A, which is going to be Cameroon taking on Thailand. And the winner of that game will play Portugal in the final to see who goes to the World Cup. Right, and, and because of the expanded field at this World Cup with 32 teams, I think it's pretty clear it's, there's no real group of death and everything feels a little bit more um, organized. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but in, uh, predictable is probably a better word in terms of how these group stages could play out with the U.S. and the Netherlands clearly the favorites. You typically have two teams in each group that are clearly the favorites that would go on to that round of 16. Hopefully Ashley Sanchez there is okay to keep going. Just coming back into the game here. As the ball is moved back towards uh, Casey Murphy, who gets the opportunity in goal tonight. Very quiet night for Alyssa Nair when these two teams met in the first game uh, Tuesday night back in uh, the US, Wednesday kickoff in the New Zealand. And it is a Saturday afternoon game in Auckland for these two teams for their second meeting here. And you hear the home crowd getting behind them as Chance just tries to knock that one forward. Lavelle picks it up. And then move backwards there by Puerto, who is playing the right back role. And this is done on the left side, who played in the final of the 2008 Under 17 World Cup, Crystal Dunn. When the US lost to North Korea in the final, that actually to this day remains the record attendance for a women's soccer game in this country. And you can see the United States with Andy Sullivan in the six. They're moving Rose Lavelle a little bit deeper. Her starting position lower. Almost a double pivot when they're building that double six. I asked Vlaco if he was worried that would they would lose a little creativity going forward. He says, no, we have Ashley Sanchez, who's equally creative in that ten. Jolly just keeping it in play down the right side up against Crystal Dunn here. And Dunn defends it really well as that one goes out for a New Zealand corner here just past the seven minute mark. Jale having a great season for Canberra United. Quiet in that first game, keeps that alive. And really, if she can't get around, this is the second best thing that's going to happen because New Zealand will take a set piece all day on the United States. Probably one of their best chances of, of scoring against the United States. She went to college at Wake Forest, Grace Jale, who makes just her 12th appearance for New Zealand tonight. Olivia Chance will swing this one in towards the front post. Put back in by Riley. Done away. And then Swanson. Looking for that run on the far side here as Rodman looks to get forward. Rodman up against Dana Green, sliding it into the middle. Sanchez was furthest forward. Great tackle by Ali Green coming all the way back for New Zealand. But the way the U.S. can burst out and counter out of these set pieces, especially with the familiarity of Trinity Rodman to Ashley Sanchez making that run forward. Only 10 seconds there from one end to the other as the ball came in to the box and the US were able to counter it very quickly in transition. Here's Swanson down the left side. She looks in really confident mood at the moment, doesn't she? As you would be after that performance <laughs> right. the other day. Puerta inside for Lavelle. Lavelle with the ball over the top and Dunn won't be able to get on the end of that one. Here is an, uh, here's another look with Ashley Sanchez just getting caught by Ali Green. Great recovery for her because she was in. And, and here's the throw down the left side with Dunn to take it for the U.S. And a much brighter start to this game than the first. And you knew with the discussion post-game 
pregame to this second game, when you talk to the players, you talk to Vlako Andonovsky, they all knew that that wasn't good enough in this first half, and they wanted to come out with better energy in this second game. Kermis ball across the back for Cook. Becky Sauerbrunn is on the bench for this one here tonight. That just drifting out of play on the far side. The U.S. with that win in the first match of 2023, which was their eighth straight against New Zealand. A combined score of 34 to 2. And they're now unbeaten in 19 in a row against the football ferns, all the way back to the first ever meeting. The only one New Zealand have won back in 1987 by a goal to nil. Here they come forward, and Jale had made a run into space, but the ball just didn't quite find her there. Gabby Rennie down the left side. He plays at Arizona State University. The U.S. having to play their way out of trouble here. But they've done so. And Gurma will turn and go all the way back towards Casey Murphy. Murphy, the 26-year-old keeper, North Carolina Courage. Six clean sheets in nine starts last year. Her last coming in the 3-0 win against Costa Rica last July. Last couple of starts, she lost against Spain and Germany. And I think, Luke, if you're New Zealand, knowing that you're missing so many of your typical starters, you talked about the depleted lineup outside of this FIFA window. A lot of clubs wouldn't release their players for the U.S. A lot of them play in WSL outside of Lindsey Horan, who went back, so they're okay because season hasn't started. So they've got their full squad. But really, this is a depleted New Zealand lineup. You want to stay compact. You don't want this game to open up. You want to pick your moments where you can press, as they just did almost successfully against the United States in their own box. But as you saw in the second half of the last game is they started to fade. They got tired, they got fatigued, the game opened up, there was a lot of space, and then you get yourself into trouble if you're New Zealand. You don't have the legs, you don't have the talent or the pace to stay with the United States. Taken quickly by Herter, this is Rose Laval. New Zealand was sleeping! And Rose Laval can't hit the target. Well done by Rose Lavelle, though, to know that, hey, look, if I play this quick enough, I can get something on goal. She talked about learning to find space where it is between the midfield and the back line, getting into positions where she can not only have a goal herself, but also being that set-up person for those ahead of her. First half, she felt there was too much side to side in, in game one. Vlatko Andonovsky showed them a few videos at the break and showed him that seam in midfield. <laughs> she said she loved the freedom. Like yeah. when you asked her if she enjoyed playing in that sort of role in the second half, her face lit up and yeah, she just said, oh, absolutely, of course. <laughs> it was a dream, I think she said, in the solo 10. She certainly made the impact. And it felt like she was on the pitch for a lot more than the 15 minutes than she actually was. She came off just after the hour mark in that second half. But within that first 15 of the second 45, certainly making an impact, as did a number of players as things started to change with goals in the 52nd minute, the 60th and the 63rd, before Williams added the fourth goal in the 74th. Germa's 12th cap today. Comes straight back at the US back line. Held up there by Satchel, but now down the left side. Rodman. A couple of assists for Trinity Rodman in the first game between these teams. This is Sullivan who played the second half of match number one. Lavelle, chance goes across to try and close down Rose Lavelle. Puerta pushing forward down that right flank. New Zealand getting the numbers back. And the US retreating to halfway here. Guns ball forward. Is that a free kick? Yes. Foul by Ali Green, who plays her club soccer in Norway with Valorenga. Just a ninth start for New Zealand for Ali Green. 
the right back tonight. Hassett left. I mentioned Neville left as well, and India Page Riley as well, who went back to Brisbane. This ball flicked inside, and it's a chance here for Sanchez. The flag goes up, though. It seemed as if she was in lots of space, and that's why she was offside. <laughs> exactly. When you look around a player and go, wait, where is everyone? <laughs> oh, that's because I'm 10 yards offside. Melissa Ortiz with us on the broadcast tonight. She's in between the benches. Melissa. Yes, so far in this hot, sunny day here, but I'm watching Crystal Dunn, and one of the things that head coach Vlad Gondonofsky said was giving her the opportunity to give her as much minutes as possible and focusing on the pairing with Naomi as well as on Mallory's side. So, so far in these first 15 minutes, we've really been able to see her helping the build-up play and, and try to feed balls in to Mallory down the left side. We've been seeing way more action on the left side than on the right side with Sofia Huerta, but take a look at Crystal Dunn and how much she's been involved in this gameplay so far. That first match was her first start for the U.S. since September of 2021. Yeah, and, and so great for Crystal Dunn to be building this these minutes and confidence. I mean, she, she didn't play for 386 days and then played four and a half months after having Marcel, her son, was born. And so seeing her back starting as you said in that last game the first time since september of 2021 and building that confidence and cohesion back is is going to be huge for the united states plus she just brings this great chemistry and energy to her she's so fun and positive she's dancing in the locker room so first thing black kondonofsky said when she came back after her leave for pregnancy was oh so good to have done her back that winning goal she scored in the playoffs for the thorns last year was quite a moment Crystal Dunn working her way back and probably won't play too much more than 45 minutes in, in this one tonight as she continues to get back towards full strength. We're into the 17th minute. Nil-nil between the football ferns and the US at Eden Park in Auckland. The ball will be chased here by Hatch and Naylor who plays for no shipping in Denmark. Quickly to that one on the edge of the box. Here comes Liz Anton down the left side. The first glory defender cut out by Rose Lavelle. Snapping at her heels, trying to win it back was Paige Satchel, who's into the team tonight for New Zealand. Gurma wide to the left here for Dunn. Trying to link up down this near side with Rodman, who started on the right and is switched now over to the left. On the left. Yeah. Much higher tempo to this one than we saw in Wellington. His cook, who came on for the second half of that match, replacing Gurma and playing alongside Sauerbrunn in match number one. Swanson will take this one quickly in towards Hatch. Swanson trying to drive here towards the byline against Anton. And out it goes for a U.S. corner on the far side. And the confidence you see in Mal Swanson's game as it's grown where she started as such a bright young player, making it to the Olympics at just a young age and then fell off the radar for a little bit. And then to see her work her way back with her confidence and her joy for the game has been great to see and what a start to 2023. Swanson in towards the six yard box. Hatch was climbing highest, but Sanchez will help it back out towards the far side. Swanson, that first touch just creates some spaces. It's hooked into the middle and Sullivan's header goes wide, but it was really well worked there by the US and a lovely little touch from Swanson just to set herself up for the cross. And there is the ball in to Sullivan. Naylor slowly walking the goalkeeper for New Zealand, trying to slow this game down a little bit and let that clock tick, tick. Sullivan coming on at halftime for Korniak in the first game. 15 starts last year. Had a goal against Uzbekistan back in April. And when you're trying to slow things down, that's not the way to do it, by putting the ball straight out of play and gifting it back to the United States here. 
Sullivan. Done in space down the left side and manages to keep that ball from Gurma in play. Up against Ali Green. And a goal kick is given this time. Look of uh, puzzle from Crystal Dunn there. Thought she should have had a corner. She didn't fight that as much as I thought she would. It tells me that maybe she didn't quite think she got it clean. Let's see. No, it was the right yeah, call, exactly. wasn't it? Exactly, yeah. She pointed. Yeah, and then she was like, yeah, <laughs> okay, you saw that come up. On there. Okay. Well, the U.S. men's national team will be in action a couple of times next week in California. Wednesday is the first game against Serbia, 9.30 Eastern time on the air with the pre-game show from the home of Angel City FC and LAFC. And Anthony Hudson, who is taking charge of the U.S. men's national team for that game, will be joining us on the halftime show here tonight. Anna Green out towards Anton on the far side. All the way across for Ali Green. Just steps past that challenge of Rodman. And Trinity Rodman did well there to get a foot in. New Zealand's uh, fans were hoping for a free kick, but Rodman defended it well and now goes back in the opposite direction. And Vlatko Andonovsky has been saying that is one area where he's looking for Trinity Rodman to continue the learning and the improvement in terms of that defensive play. And he felt that he got what he wanted from her in, in that respect the other night. And it was a good learning experience because the pressure wasn't coming too often. It, it gave a little more time for her. To process it. And, and her positioning, too. And there you see her winning that ball back for them. That's one thing that he said has been a huge emphasis in her game. Got the little ball through here, and Rodman will get onto the end of it. Hatch is there in the middle. It's Hatch with a chance. It's Hatch with a goal. The late replacement in the starting lineup for Alex Morgan. And she scores to make it 1-0 at Eden Park. Goal number five of her international career. And the United States with the first half lead. So very fitting that it falls to Trinity Rodman, who really started this all by winning that ball back one play earlier. And what a beautifully placed bent ball in to Ashley Hatch, who stays in an onside position and hits that so well. She made it look easy. Naylor coming out, cutting the angle. Not much left for Hatch to put it, and she just threads it into the side netting. Great finish and ball in. Rodman to Hatch. We've heard that somewhere before. Ashley Hatch scored against New Zealand last year. She gets one today, and Trinity Rodman with another assist, having got two in the first game. Her first two assists as a member of this team. It's just her third U.S. start. You heard her say in the, in the pregame with Melissa, I'm just trying to keep up with Mal Swanson. <laughs> well, she's doing that in these two games. New Zealand looking to try and get back into it immediately. Huerta defending that one without a problem against Ava Collins. You talk about her trying to keep up with Swanson. The other night, she became the youngest player with two assists in a game since Mallory Swanson against Russia in 2017. Swanson, of course, back then was Mallory Pugh, for those who are still catching up. Right. December wedding to Dansby Swanson, shortstop for Chicago Cubs now. I said to Mal, how was it? Congrats. She said, oh my gosh, so much fun. I want to go back. <laughs> First goal for Ashley Hatch in her last eight caps since last April against Uzbekistan. And it can't be easy to just switch the mindset when you're expecting to be on the bench and you're going through warm-ups and all of a sudden yeah. someone pulls up injured and you're going to be starting. Yeah. And especially, I mean, we've talked a lot about the pressure of making a roster in a World Cup year. Ashley Hatch is one of those players who's, she knows she's not going to get a lot of opportunities to get a look. There's only, as we talked about earlier, there's only seven matches left before the World Cup for the U.S. And so every minute and moment counts when these players get a little bit of time. Of course, Black Wondonofsky is going to be watching them, especially in May and June when they don't have any U.S. Women's National Team games. And here is that play started by the great ball in by Ashley Sanchez. 
and Rodman places it. That's a really good perfectly. ball in. So nice, weighted pass. Got it right round the back of Anna Green, the Sydney FC defender, who is one of the more experienced players within this New Zealand roster. It's her 82nd cap, but Rodman played it into perfection. Ashley Hatch read it well. And this is an area the United States is going to be working on as well. You can see them trying to set up in a mid-block, picking and choosing their moments when they press, trying to read those right triggers. They didn't want to high press this whole game because they felt that that's not realist realistic to a World Cup scenario. Really trying to emulate, knowing this is a depleted New Zealand side, trying to figure out scenarios that can help them in six months' time. Swanson back on the left side now as it's played forward towards Sanchez. And Swanson will continue chasing here up against Ali Riley. She'll get there first, cutting into the box, played back wonderfully, and Sanchez can't score. Naylor coming out quickly or it could have been two. And there is a clean display of the pace of Swanson. Look at her just fly by Riley. A little touch back to Sanchez. Perfectly placed in that she sees her coming in. And Naylor cutting off that angle, making the quick react save, keeping New Zealand in this game. That ball curled into the front post. Naylor able to punch it away. Wasn't too convincing on the clearance. It'll come back out here for Gurma. Lavelle under pressure on the far side from Ava Collins. The cross will loop towards Naylor once again, who has to be firm with those hands in catching that right on the goal line. You speak of players on the U.S. team trying to fight their way into rosters and to starting positions. Here's another player, an Aaron Naylor, Luke, who with her 79 caps, Victoria Essen, has been playing in that number one spot, but Victoria Essen wasn't released by the Rangers in Scotland because, as we said, not a FIFA window, so Naylor getting a look, trying to win back that number one spot. She's been in three World Cup squads, Erin Naylor, didn't play in 2011, started in 2015 and 2019, and in a couple of Olympics as well, but right now, it seems as if she's on the outside looking in in terms of the number one starting position for New Zealand as they co-host the World Cup. Andy Sullivan straight back up, so it looks like she's okay after that aerial duel. Swanson once again involved here as it comes back out towards Crystal Dunn. Dunn's ball in towards the back post. Green will hook it away. Lavelle. Now Cook. 31 caps between the two at the back in the middle. Cook with 20 and Gurma with 11 coming into this tonight. And you've got Huerta on the right who is also under 30 caps. And then, uh, of course, the experience of Crystal Dunn, for whom tonight is appearance number 128. But there will be a moment, you figure, during the World Cup when although in big games maybe Vlatko Andonovsky will want to rely on that experience of Becky Sauerbrunn, She's not going to play three group games in a row, yeah. probably, in such a yeah. short space of time. So he needs to get this combination some, some game time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, a lot to ask of Sauerbrunn. Sixth start together for Cook and Germa at the back. The I, third with Murphy as the goalkeeper. And, and I think the challenge for that young back line is, is who's going to run that line? Who's the one, if Dunn's not in there and you have a younger Emily Fox on that left side, who's the one who stands steps up and he's going to run that line. Casey Murphy is younger behind them as well. Swanson back for Dunn. A lot of the play going down the left side. Nice interchange on the edge of the box there. Sullivan was involved, but there was no way through. Huerta plays it forward this time. U.S. hadn't scored in the first half of the last four games. They uh, put that one right tonight. It was the longest streak since 2004. 218 minute first half scoring drought before that goal. And the opening goal three days ago really changed the complexion of the game. 
open the game up in that second half. And that that is going to be the challenge for New Zealand is can they stay compact enough to keep this game tight and then they maybe counter out of a couple situations. But they have if this game opens up on them as you saw in the first game, they're not going to be able to stay with the United States. Half an hour played, 1-0 for the United States, and Vlatko Andonovsky had talked about wanting to continue to put players in positions where they were able to build relationships, even though it might not be that players would be able to play 90 minutes in both of these games. When they were on the pitch, he wanted to surround them with people that they would likely be playing with when it comes to World Cup time, and we've seen that continuing relationship down the left today with Dunn and Swanson, where they're, exactly. they're causing all kinds of problems, aren't they? Yeah, and you see, you're seeing it with Rose Lavelle and Trinity Rodman. Typically, it's Sophia Smith. That's another pairing that we talk about a lot. Obviously, the center back to the fullback. Another big challenge by Green. On Hatch. You know she's in a battle tonight so far. Wasn't the best challenge at all there from Anna Green. We're going to see a change very early in this game for New Zealand. Ali Green is going to be heading out of the game. And it's going to be Ashley Ward, I think, coming in. Ward started on that left side in the first game, moving over to the right if they do a position for position swap. I mean, something this early says to me we got an injury issue here. Perhaps. Players using this as an opportunity to uh, take on some liquids in the heat of this one. And Ali Green replaced by Ashley Ward, who plays her club soccer in the second tier in England with Southampton. Got promoted to that second division last year. Played at Boston College all the way back in 2013. Hatch won't want to come off, will she, after <laughs> getting that opportunity right at the, the last moment there. If you are just joining us, it was a late change to the starting lineup with. Alex Morgan dropping out during warm-ups. Lower leg tightness for Alex Morgan. So Rose Laval handed the captain's armband for this one. And Ashley Hatch getting the start and making the most of it by scoring the only goal of the game so far. New Zealand win winless in their last four matches. They've lost three of the last four. Apart from that 4-0 defeat against the US, a 1-0 loss against Korea Republic, a 2-0 loss against Japan. After winning just two of 12 matches played in 2022. Their back-to-back -back wins coming in California last September against Mexico and the Philippines when they scored a winning goal inside the last 10 minutes in both of those matches. They'll play the Philippines in the World Cup. They're in Group A alongside Norway, Philippines, and Switzerland. Uh, and I think that's a doable group for New Zealand to have some hope of getting out of that group. Never won a World yeah, Cup never game. Never won a World Cup game in their five World Cups. But I do think with the excitement of the home crowd, the energy behind it, you can get a win out of there, maybe a tie out of one of the other games. Three, four points might get you through. Well, they'll have the home field and home crowd advantage, of course. And boy, what a, you know, talk about the, the trials and tribulations of living through COVID for these New Zealand players. I mean, they, they shut things down. They were not playing. They were not traveling. You couldn't get in and out of the country. I mean, they really shut the program down. Rodman's ball into the middle, cleared away at the back by Anna Green. Now Rose Lavelle, lovely ball over the top, Swanson giving chase, and read by Green, but I think the flag has gone up on the far side. 
And even pre-COVID, they didn't usually play a lot of home games. And now they're getting a run of matches. They played a couple in Christchurch towards the end of last year. They have these games against the US. This has been pulled back for a free kick. And they're going to be playing more home games next month. They've got Portugal and a couple against Argentina. And the advantage didn't come. The referee pulled it, it back for that challenge there. That late challenge on Rose Laval before she sent that ball in. Yeah, they, they actually did not gather before the Olympics until they were at the Olympics. They hadn't gathered for two years at the Tokyo Games. Imagine that. Inside the final 10 minutes of the first half here. And Rose Laval will take it straight against the wall. She'll be able to pick this one back up here. Ali Riley quickly across. And she clears up towards halfway. That clearance gets a good ovation from the home fans. Ali Riley, of course, so well regarded. 35 year old born in LA. She's only one away now from 150 appearances for the football ferns. Played an hour in game one. Here's another free kick given by referee Lara Lee. It's one of 10 World Cup stadiums across nine host cities. And on July the 20th, New Zealand will play the first game of the World Cup here against Norway to open the tournament. It's the same day that Australia will also open with a home game against Ireland. And there's actually talk that FIFA could be considering a change of venue for that opening game because tickets have almost sold out at 40,000 and they might move to the Olympic Park to an 80,000 stadium. But you know what my next statement is going to be, Luke. They should have been there in the first place? Yes. <laughs> Why? Why are they always surprised that these games are selling out? Do not even get me started. My heart rate just started elevating. I'm like, oh my God. Well, at least they're getting there in the end. Uh, Although you're right. It's just always a surprise. Wow. We had no idea this many with people would come. Really? Really? Okay, that's all. I'm going to leave that there. Let's just leave that there. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> I think... Laval on the end of a lovely ball forward, and then she'll try and turn and find that ball into Rodman, who looked like she was fouled on the edge of the box. Nothing given. I think it would have been just outside anyway. The ball that breaks that entire midfield line for New Zealand in the seam. Is that not a free kick? That has got to be a foul of some sort. Two arms wrapped around her by Ashley Ward. Here is that pass by Gurma that breaks that entire midfield, the pass we were playing in pregame. And there is how, how that's not a foul. Even if, it, if she's not in the box and they're not giving a PK, that's got to be something. And you saw the look on Rodman's face. The stadium is the home of the All Blacks, the famed rugby team. So maybe they'll let challenges like that go. <laughs> Gurma. Now Cook. Swanson couldn't find the ball through. Chance blocked it, but it comes back out for Huerta on the right side. And that's a decent cross all the way towards the ball. It's two, seven minutes before half-time, and Rose Laval, captain for the night, gets the goal. Uh, New Zealand is thinking, if only we can get into halftime and keep this game at one, then possibly we can keep this game close. And there's Sophia, Sophia Huerta finding Rose Laval. Totally lost on that backside by the two center backs for New Zealand they both get caught ball watching Rose slips in on the backside hits it well enough to get past Naylor but a great ball in by Huerta from that right side really well works you're right though about defensively how poor it was in terms of them both going to the ball and leaving Rose Lavelle but having been involved got one assist the other night she if there were extra assists, would have had one the first goal as well in the build-up to that one. Heavily involved in game one. Gets her 23rd international goal tonight. She did say to us 
with our Zoom call with her last night that if she's in front of goal, she hopes she hit it a little bit harder than she did <laughs> in that first game where she said it barely reached two miles a per trickle. hour. A trickle. <laughs> that one, she finished nicely. Well, Vlatko Andonovsky wanted a better start. He wanted more energy right from the start. He's got that tonight, hasn't he? Yeah, I think they're going to be pleased at halftime and know there's still things they can work on. The scenarios we talked about for World Cup. But if you're New Zealand, you've got to at least keep the ball and try to keep the ball a little bit more. If you're chasing for 90 minutes against a team that's holding the ball and moving, it's just so exhausting. And as we saw in that first game, they don't have the legs or fitness for it yet. I mean, that is the challenge of these January games for a lot of players. But I do think Klim Klimkova will say at halftime that they've got to get a little bit more hold of the ball, stay compact, and pick their chances. Cleverly on it here. And Dunn will clear away up towards halfway. It's a third career international goal against New Zealand for Rose Laval. Scored in a friendly in St. Louis in 2019. Also in the Olympics. The 2-1 win in the 2020 Olympics against New Zealand. Six appearances in the last World Cup in 2019. A goal, of course, in the final against the Netherlands. Issues with a lovely ball turned forward down the right side. Well worked once again, involving Rodman and Puerta. As Ashley Ward tries to get back, she's gone across to her familiar left side after coming off the bench to replace Ali Green, who had started at right back. Anton has switched to the right. I do like that you're seeing a more offensively engaged Andy Sullivan. I think she's playing a really good game. One of the things she talked about in the post game after that last Germany game that they won, they had to come back from behind, was having the confidence and freedom now to feel like she can get forward and more engaged offensively because she had the confidence now that a Rose Lavelle or a Lindsay Horan in that game would cover for her. I do think it's important. I mean, as much as we've talked about the importance of her in the six defensively, good things happen when she gets on the ball offensively. Swanson down the left, but the flag is up for offside. New Zealand have never scored more than one goal in a game against the United States, and that is now 12 games in a row against the Football Ferns, where the U.S. have scored first. And they've got the first goal in 19 of 21 all-time meetings. The U.S. ranked first in the world since June of 2017. New Zealand currently ranked number 24, having fallen from 22 in December. Anna Green's ball forward, cut out there by Huerta. Green once again into Cleverly in the midfield. Plays her club soccer in Denmark. Riley out to this right side for Liz Anton. Jale losing to Dunn. Gurm. She'll get it back from Cook. And now the U.S. making New Zealand chase, but that ball is given away. Laval gets a foot in there, but it's with Satchel. And in the end, Alana Cook is able to make amends, putting it out of play. U.S. trying to, again, thread and find the ball that beats that entire New Zealand midfield. And when they do get caught occasionally, as Cook did there, that is really the best opportunity for New Zealand to come at them and try and create something offensively. Backwards from Chance. And across for Liz Anton on the near side. A 17th cap. No Lindsay Horan, of course, for this one tonight. She departed New Zealand to head back to France. Lyon second in the French top flight, just a point behind Paris Saint-Germain. They've got a game on Sunday against third place Montpellier, who are quite a way back of second, nine points behind Lyon. But it was an agreement that was made before the trip. Horan with four goals this season in the French top flight, and it's uh, 
as it has been of late, quite a battle between PSG and Lyon for top spot there in France. <laughs> Good though, especially in a World Cup year that an, ag an agreement was able to be reached yeah, between exactly. Leon and the US so that Haran could at least play in the one game. Because as we know, that is not a short flight to get to, <laughs> to New Zealand there and back. Again, Andy Sullivan stepping in the middle to win that ball originally. Sanchez getting it caught at her feet. And Chance showing a little bit of bite there. I think she's a little bit unlucky to get that called against her. Into the three minutes being added on at the end of the first half at Eden Park in Auckland, New Zealand. A stadium that has a capacity of around 50,000. It's New Zealand's national stadium, located in central Auckland, New Zealand's largest city. Where World Cup fever is already in full flow. Dunn's ball inside. Sanchez turning it backwards. Gurma. Beautifully done as it's into the path of Swanson. Swanson for Rodman, who just couldn't quite sneak that ball back through, but Lavelle was trying to make her way forward. And now Jale will get that one away. Satchel turning. Gurma tracking her all the way. And this throw goes the way of the United States. See on the bench, a couple of New Zealand players getting some instructions going through. Some details with some of the coaching staff on the near side, so we'd expect them to make a couple of changes at least at half time. And probably two or three from the US as well. But we'll wait and see what happens from Black and Danofsky. Yeah, you've got a lot of players for the US who they don't want to go too hard. Lavelle with a ball into the path of Sanchez here, and Sanchez goes for that back post. It seems as if they can cut them open at will. Some of the balls that have been played forward tonight just completely cutting out that back line. Oh, yeah, and, and you're seeing them shift so much that there's just space, so much space. Rose Lavelle able to find her on that far side. Inside the final minute of time being added on in the second match of World Cup year for the United States. Hatch with the first goal in the 22nd minute, Lavelle getting goal number two. Huerta with the assist on that goal, fourth of her international career. The whistle goes for half time at Eden Park, and it has been a good first 45 minutes for Black Kowandanovsky's United States, leading here by two goals to nil. Gurma and Dunn for the United States. Emily Sonnet, of course, making her way back, having had a long spell on the sidelines, hasn't played for club or country since injuring her foot in the W Championship semi final against Costa Rica back on July the 14th. Yeah, you're looking at a good seven months off for Sonnet as well. Working her way back in. Great to see she's getting some minutes done, as we mentioned, on a minutes restriction, just trying to build that. So Foxy back in. The two players to leave the game, Paige Satchel and Grace Jale. Grace Wisniewski came on. In the first match between these teams for her debut, replaced Cleverly in the 71st minute, second time called up to the squad. We mentioned in that game that moment where Ali Riley went to talk to Wisniewski and told her to go and enjoy herself after fighting back from what had been a really tough time as she missed a lot of last year with mental health issues. And the Devon Jackson coming in, first call up to the Football Ferns, 
went to Western Kentucky University where she played as a number 10, but uh, she can play midfield or up front, plays for Eastern Suburbs, won the National League Championship in New Zealand last year, back in December. And great for, for Jackson as well in that she tore her hip, the labrum, twice while she was at Western Kentucky. So good to see her getting her first call up and cap for New Zealand. Jackson will chase this one forward and then down the middle it's Gabby Rennie as well. Sonnet plays it up the right side for Huerta. Sonnet in for her 70th cap. And Ashley Ward, who came on during the first half, the first change that was made. Getting in a bit of trouble here against Rodman, the left back. Hatch, scorer of the US first goal tonight. Lavelle, back to Sullivan. Emily Fox on the left side today, having started on the right in the first half in match one, and then she switched across in the second half, but she was telling us yesterday how she uh, has played there a fair bit before. Most of her college career was spent on the right side as well. Yeah, she played in that right back position, bombing up that right flank for UNC. Said it was going back to my college days. No problem. <laughs> Murphy away, 12th cap for Murphy, and she hasn't had a lot to do. Lovely ball through, and Sanchez up over halfway here, with Nuski trying to track back, but now it's played for Swanson down the left side, into the middle, and Hatch met it. Just couldn't direct it towards the goal. Hatch acknowledging Swanson, because that is a gift of a ball. Ashley Sanchez running at that back line plays it perfectly into Swanson who knows she has to get it with some pace and quickly and does just that what a ball great ball Hatch comes at it with the right foot just trying to knock it in correct decision just didn't have the precision to get it on frame but Swanson continuing her run in this second half and her dominance Flag is up for offside on the near side, but uh, the referee hasn't spotted it. Let's head back pitch side to Melissa Ortiz. I got to chat with Vladko at halftime, and he was happy with the build-up play of the team in the first half, but the team was creative, aggressive, and brave. And he has Rose playing in that eight role, a bit deeper than usual. She's lower down on the pitch, but even from there, she's been able to be creative, and that gives the team and the coaching staff a new look and a new angle to build off of. Swanson chasing onto this one and is offside once again. So we've seen last game, Lindsay Horan in a slightly different role. This game, yeah. Rose Laval given a bit of a different responsibility as well. What does that suggest to you about where Vlatko Andonovsky is right now in terms of what he's going to do with his midfield for the World Cup? Yeah, well, typically he's been looking at it's just one six and then a double ten. So you have that single pivot. And what you're seeing now is he's wanting in that first game, to your point, Luke, Lindsey Horan was coming back next to Taylor Korniak in that first half. It was Andy Sullivan in the second. Um, and now you have Rose Lavelle in that eight doing that work i mean i think the key is they could use help in the build-up they could use the help defensively but do you lose anything offensively and against a team like new zealand perhaps you don't right because they're not possessing the ball they're not putting your defense under any real danger but what happens against those better teams if you have a deep sitting rose lavelle a deep sitting lindsey haran are they able to contribute as much creatively and do you need them to right if you have another creative player like an ashley sanchez in that 10 but all things they're looking at, I know the midfield space has been an area they really wanted to focus on with that 6, 8, 10 here. And as Boxy and DeMarcus pointed out at halftime, Rose still able to get forward and get that goal. Has the engine to do so, which is always a great sign. But the thing I always wonder is when you're playing a Germany, when you're playing a Spain and England, the top 10 teams, which we know the U.S. has struggled with, are they able to get forward from that eight against a really good team like that? And, and the U.S. 
against the top 10 has has not been performing well as we know I hate to give that stat three wins five losses two draws in their last 10 games versus top 10 teams and that is going to be the challenge for them Ward down the left side trying to get out of a bit of trouble here for New Zealand but done pretty well until it was taken away by Trinity Rodman Swanson looking for the ball through to Hatch but Anton recovering from the far side to put it out of play for a throw. Still over six minutes played in the second half at Eden Park in Auckland. As Swanson has it now down the right and finds Rodman. Back for Huerta. Into the starting lineup tonight. Sonnet, who made one appearance at the World Cup in 2019. Cook. A high ball forward to the far side as. Fox is pushing forward and up against Liz Anton. It's a decent cross into the middle. Robin couldn't get there, but then Swanson can. What a start to the year it has been for Mallory Swanson. And it is 3-0 just after half time. And she gets her third goal of this World Cup year in just the second match of 2023. All starts with Alana Cook with the ball into Fox. As we know, Fox loves to get forward, and when she's faced up, has the confidence to play a ball like that in. And the deflection off the Rodman shot just falls perfectly to Swanson, who puts herself in a position. Give her credit. She comes around, finds the rebound. Closes that goal out and make make no mistake from that distance. She's gonna slot that up for me You knew Swanson didn't want to get off this field without getting one today as well And as you mentioned Luke her third goal That leads all US Scores and only the second game of 2023 What a start it has been to this year for Mallory Swanson and she is eager for more here New Zealand need to try and regain a little bit of composure. Uh, this is where the game can get away from New Zealand if they do not stay compact. And you see the fatigue setting in for these New Zealand players. And that is the challenge. When you're playing at an amateur level, you're playing in college, you're not getting the fitness, of course, that these players at NWSL are playing in these top clubs are. And clearly makes a world of difference as you get into those... 60th 70 80th minute nor do they have the depth to sub in some fresh legs and real game-changing type players right now u.s moving the ball quickly swanson down the left side up against liz anton lining up along the edge of the box here hatch with one of them sanchez forward as well fox ward heads it away And now Sonnet, the halftime substitute, forward for Sullivan. It's closed down there by Devin Jackson, but the U.S. able to play through it. And that ball down the right side, just too far in front of Huerta. Well, Mallory Swanson finished 2022 with 25 goals for her country. Add on the three, that gets her to 28. And it leaves Shannon Box in the rearview mirror with 27 <laughs> as she passes both Shannon Box and Joy Fawcett. <laughs> Sorry, Boxy. Slipping down those scoring shots. <laughs> Not a Happens good night for Shannon. All of us. Happens to all of us. Ten minutes gone in the second half. And his sonnet. Cook's ball forward. A couple of players tried that little Rose Lavelle back heel. <laughs> Didn't quite pull it off as well as you did in the pregame show. I'm sure they saw that. They thought, how do we emulate that? <laughs> Olivia Chance chasing down the left side. Alana Cook trying to get there as Gabby Reddy puts the pressure on. Sonnet stepping out of the pressure and the U.S. playing the ball towards half A, where Swanson will now give chase. Hatch there as well as Ali Riley hooks it clear. Don't expect Ali Riley maybe to play too much more than an hour, which is what she got on game one. Here's Lavelle. Well, trying to get away from Wisniewski and puts that one through for Hatch. Riley just slipping there. And Naylor able to pounce on the ball. And Riley looks hurt. So those two number sevens collided. It's a 
think she's grabbing her hand there. She's getting in a good position here, Ali Riley, too, waiting, hoping Naylor's going to grab it. Oh, and just gets stomped on there by Hatch accidentally right there. Oh. See her grab her hand right away. Doesn't look good for Ali Riley at the moment. Ouch, those, those hurt. Two first half goals, Hatch and Lavelle. And then Swanson scoring for the third straight game, of course. She got a goal against Germany in that final match of 2022. And then starting this year with three goals in the space of two games. The other thing I, I, I love to see, as we mentioned in the first half, the growth of Mal Pugh, now Swanson's game, is that you're seeing the leader in her come out as well. This confidence. Andy Sullivan was talking about it again when we look back to that three-game loss streak at the end of 2022, and they're playing Germany, facing possibly a fourth straight loss, and there's Ali looking at her hand. Andy Sullivan saying, I missed the tackle when Mal was the first one to tell me that's not good enough. You know, and a young Mal Pugh is Swanson, sorry, it's going to take me a bit, <laughs> apologies, is, is not saying that. And you see her competitiveness, her fight, her will. I mean, it's all those things when the U.S. goes down and you're looking to players to change a game, that's the reaction you want. And you're seeing it grow in her. And then on, on top of the leadership mentality portion is when she's on loop, she's just gliding by players. And she's gliding by players in the 89th minute as if she hasn't even played. Black Kwandanovsky is preparing a triple change. We're going to see Lynn Williams, who scored on her comeback. We're going to see Taylor Korniak, who started for the first time for the U.S. in game number one. And Christy Mewis is going to come in as well. So Korniak will make way and uh, Sanchez as well for those two changes in the midfield. And then we'll wait and see who uh, Lynn Williams is replacing. Erin Naylor's ball away. And Riley puts it into touch on the far side and uh, Hatch was coming back from an offside position so couldn't get on the end of that one. As we're into the 60th minute, a comfortable afternoon on this Saturday in Auckland for the United States. Good to see Allie Riley back in. A lot of Angel City fans will be very happy about that as well. Cooks ball across the back for Sonnet. like Mitch Purse might be coming into the game as well as with 30 minutes left to go Blackko Andonovsky goes to his bench looks like those changes will come the next time the ball goes out of play as Anton puts it out and the US will have to hold the throw because the changes are coming here the US with first action of 2023 Korniak played the first half three days ago Ashley Hatch, one of the players coming out of the game, having scored after not expecting to start. A late <laughs> replacement for the injured Alex Morgan. And what a ball it was from Rodman. A great ball in by Rodman. And again, that's not an easy finish with Naylor cutting off that angle. Not much of a, a gap between Naylor and that side netting. Often those get away from you. Well done by Ashley Hatch with no notice to get into that starting position get a goal and make an impression this is everything these players are looking to do is we've pointed out with only seven games 
if you include this one, left for the United States before they're off to the World Cup. So Trinity Rodman, who got two assists three days ago, gets another one tonight and is uh, replaced. One of the changes being made. So Sullivan and Sanchez leaving the game. Rodman and Hatch as well. And coming in, it's Lynn Williams, Mitch Purse, who started and played 45 minutes in match one. Also, Mewis and Korniak. Christy Mewis playing in that match I mentioned earlier here in New Zealand back in 2008 that Crystal Dunn was also involved in the final of the Under-17 World Cup in the US lost against North Korea. So half an hour for these players to try and make an impact here. Yeah, we, we saw Lynn Williams coming in for her first game since almost a year with her hamstring. And what does she do in that first game against New Zealand? Grabs herself a goal. So another chance for her fighting to get back in to this roster after having been gone a very long time, fighting to get back in. These 30 minutes are going to be vital for her. And for Mitch Purse, who wasn't brought into those September, October friendlies, sorry, October, November friendlies. And yet she's getting a look here. I thought she had a very good first game as well. Korniak, as you mentioned, started in the sixth. Did well. Christy Mewis getting a look. All these players know there is limited options when you're with this U.S. Women's National Team to make an impression. And for New Zealand, that's not great news because it, <laughs> <laughs> it means fresh, hungry legs. <laughs> this is not a quality, team. Quality, quality coming in as well. This is not a team that's going to back off and not want to score. And yeah. So they're just thinking, how do we keep this tight? somehow Swanson gliding down the right left side there as she rolls it forward to Fox the half-time substitute but the flag is up for offside Lynn Williams scoring just seven minutes after coming on for Swanson in the first match between these teams it was her first appearance for club or country since March the 18th last year and there is Fox close but okay in an offside position Riley gets it away Ashley Ward down the left side cut out there by Huerta Ward in with a challenge a little late right in front of the bench and you see the arms go up from the substitutes on the US bench there's Korniak and the ball played through here. Uh, Swanson just looks to keep it in play, but she can't. And I think with Korniak in, who just played that ball into Swanson, Korniak in in the six should be a little bit different than Andy Sullivan. Korniak typically plays in the eight for San Diego, a little bit higher. But she's got a nice soft touch on the ball, soft feet, good vision. But will you see Rose Lavelle come back more in the eight? Will she play higher in the ten? in this second half with that switch from Sullivan. Flicked on there by Swanson. Now Purse trying to help it on. Cleared away at the back by Green. Chance couldn't keep it under control. Williams was trying to get there, but this will be Korniak, San Diego midfielder. comes across a long way to head that one out of play 25 year old from New Jersey who plays for OL Reign in the NWSL last year the most appearances of her US career 15 appearances for the team we had a senior debut back in 2019 actually made her first ever substitute appearance for the US in that game against New Zealand coming on at half time a few days ago every other appearance had been a start up until that point 
cutting inside from the far side and Swanson was right in front there as Lynn Williams looked to try and get that shot towards goal should there be a spill from the keeper yeah and good confidence by Lynn Williams looking to cut in find a gap doesn't get as much on it as she wanted to but just trying to get her feet underneath her after having such a long absence just about at the midway mark of the second half at Eden Park in Auckland, New Zealand and the US lead by three goals to nil. As we send you back to Melissa Ortiz. Both first half goals came in from crosses. In the first half, they had more opportunities from crosses, but position-wise, Flacco said that he wanted to see more runners and options in the box. So now, with Mitch Purse and Lynn Williams, their task for these next 20 minutes or so is to make more aggressive diagonal runs into the box. Good recon, Melissa. That is one thing we often hear from Andonovsky is is he is so big on what are what are the options in the box what are the runs what is the decision making in that final third and again it goes back to again this is a team that the u.s knows it's going to be handily it knows that these last 30 20 minutes are not going to be that challenging so what are the things when you're coming in off the bench as mitch purse what are the things that you want to work on as a team and that's one thing that they felt hasn't been strong enough is their runs in the box, the options in the box. And then if they can get those runs right, the second piece of that puzzle, of course, is what is that service like? And they think that can be cleaned up as well. So two things they'll be working on that they know will serve them very well come six months. 74% possession for the U.S. in the first match against New Zealand. It's a little over 70 once again in this one tonight so far through almost 70 minutes of play. Williams battling back to get there. Up against Ava Collins, who's on the far side. And here come a couple of changes. We're going to see Mackenzie Barry coming in and also Emma Ralston. Ali Riley will make way. And Daisy Cleverly as well. Ali Riley, someone you know well. I know you talked to, about her and her influence in match one, but we see it again today, just what she means to this team and what it means uh, to her yeah. to be part of it. And, and, and what it means to this team to be hosting this World Cup in six months' time. Talked to Ali a couple days before the first game, and she said the, the country is so excited and it's an opportunity for us as a country to grow the game, to build for these women. And Ali herself, having played in four World Cups, four Olympics, is the captain of this team. Many American fans know her. She plays, of course, with Angel City and has played in the NWA side for a long time, played at Stanford University. Grew up, as you mentioned, Luke, in L.A. To, her dad was from New Zealand, but... To see the excitement on all these players' faces for the potential. And that's the thing that takes me back to 1999 with the World Cup. You just knew that this was going to be a launch pad for greater things in the country. And that's exactly where these this New Zealand team feels they're at. And you can sense the excitement for it. There hasn't been much for the home crowd to shout about through 70 minutes. But now they have the corner on the far side. And it's Olivia Chance to take it. Into the middle, Murphy comes to punch, Lavelle gets it away. I'm not sure that was the correct decision. Uh, Emily Fox wasn't happy that it went the way of the corner. She felt it should have been a goal kick anyway. And then Lynn Williams with a strong challenge. The home fans don't like it. And the substitute, Mackenzie Barry, is down as Williams gets a yellow card. Mackenzie Barry, one of the Wellington Phoenix players on the roster. Made a debut in October last year in a 2-0 loss against Japan. On for her fifth cap. The other one, Emma Ralston, coming on for her 15th. She's also with Wellington Phoenix, but was sent off last Sunday in a 2-0 defeat against Perth Glory, so she's suspended for this next match for her club, Ralston, so she 
That was fortuitous timing, yeah, actually. Yeah, she gets the chance to play <laughs> on international she, duties. She gets this game instead. Yeah. Olivia Chance will swing it in. Murphy comes to claim she couldn't get there. And the referee has given a free kick here. For a moment, it looked as if the U.S. were in trouble. But Christy Muse was down. And Muse. There is the original foul on Barry that created this set piece. Murphy coming out. And really, in that situation, Ava Collins wanting. Murphy's got to come a bit stronger there. You see Christy Mewis lost in that shuffle as well. But I think the right call, always protecting those goalkeepers. Quieter pushing this ball forward down the right side, and Mitch Purse will give chase. But Ashley Ward is back there defending for New Zealand. Green just gets it away in time. Ashley Ward coming in, number 30. Midway through that first half, replacing Ali Green. U.S. Soccer on HBO Max is brought to you by Volkswagen, presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. And after 73 minutes almost at Eden Park in Auckland, New Zealand, it is 3-0 for the United States. First half goals from Hatch and Lavelle. Rodman with the assist on the Hatch goal. Her third career assist. Her third in the space of two games, and then it was Huerta with the assist on Lavelle's first goal of the year in the 39th minute. Swanson making it 3-0 with her third goal already in 2023, just after half-time. Unassisted, 53rd minute goal for Swanson. Forward from Sonnet. Swanson getting it backwards, Korniak playing the ball over the top and Lynn Williams giving chase as the ball comes in for Lavelle! She's got another one! Rose Lavelle, two goals on the night! Williams with the chase. You thought at first that Korniak had put that in too far. Naylor decides to stay on her line, and it's across to Rose Lavelle. New Zealand unable to pick her up again, and Rose Lavelle, who finds herself completely unmarked, Ward unable to slide over, and to not in a position. Didn't even hit it right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It all counts the same. Just a case of getting so, anything on it at that yeah. point. And you, and you see her laughing about it. But getting in the, pos the position is half the battle, as we know, and Rose in the perfect position. And for her second goal of this game, and both goals really for Rose Lavelle coming off situations where that marking hasn't been up to par. Not a situation you would see when they're playing a top 10 team where she's wide open like that. But Rose making the most of it. This very much a makeshift back line for New Zealand and at times it has looked like it. But Rose Laval taking full advantage. Two goals on the night. And after coming off the bench and scoring a goal on her comeback three days ago, yeah. Williams with the assist mm -hmm. in this one tonight. Yeah, did well to chase that one down. Naylor decided to stay. I thought she was going to come at first. Started with the Cornac ball over the top from the six. It's a fourth international brace for Rose Lavelle. And Williams in a very short space of time making an impact in this game with the assist and, of course, the yellow card. Wisniewski. Played forward down the right side. Anton was looking to try and find... One of her teammates up top, but the ball just won't stick there for New Zealand. And now the free kick given as Swanson is fouled. So it's 4-0 like it was the other night, but a very different story as to how this game has gone for the United States. 
in comparison to what we saw in match one and have you seen improvements really wholesale improvements throughout the performance tonight well i think the thing this u.s women's national team takes a lot of pride in is they like to think that they play complete games and you saw it was really a tale of two halves in that first game with the first half being slow and less energy and getting that rust out of them and of course they turned it around in the second half with all four goals first with the ball in just over the top of the head of williams but this feels better energy more complete you got a lot of changes in this second half which can always obviously disrupt the rhythm of your play and possession here comes devon jackson on a debut for the football ferns back towards chance who has the captain's armband on after the departure of ali riley and agree pushing that ball forward Gabby Rennie is wide on the left side, that's where it comes. But uh, she couldn't get past Sofia Huerta. Gabby Rennie playing at Arizona State University. So many connections with this New Zealand team to U.S. colleges. Five current players on this roster playing in the United States. David Collins at St. John's, 28. Here's Williams up against Liz Anton on the far side. Now Rose Lavelle, who is on a hat trick. Well, Graham Winkworth, the head coach at Arizona State, telling us that Gabby Rennie is a really great teammate, a leader, has a good burst of pace, loves to go 1v1, works hard defensively. Haven't seen an awful lot of that 1v1 direct ability going forward because <laughs> little, it's a very different, different environment, isn't it? A little different than the college game, right? <laughs> Little difference in pace. Swanson giving chase down the right side as Anna Green comes across. Did she get the ball or did she get Swanson? I'm not sure Swanson can believe she didn't get the free kick there, or did she? I thought she did. We'll see. Dangerous tackle by Green coming in, cleans her out there, doesn't get the ball. That has to be yep. a free kick. And there it is. And the crowd announced of 12,721. Or is it just the corner? Oh my goodness, that's two. And you can see two that she <laughs> you had Trinity Rodman earlier getting taken down with the tackle and then Swanson. And it, it, it. In a situation like this, the last thing you want to see is this game get out of hand a bit and someone get hurt. And someone get hurt, exactly. And that's, I think, the angst you're seeing on Swanson's face of, come on. 12 7 2 1 is a new record for the football ferns. They break their attendance record for the second time this week. Lavelle with two goals gets this one in towards the back post. And it's five goals as Taylor Korniak scores. Not surprising. The main aerial target for the United States as soon as Korniak gets on the field is that player herself. Taylor Korniak so good in the air with her height and her ability. And if you're New Zealand, you've got to put players on her. No one on that back post following her. Hot ball watching again because she is just so dangerous. Cuts in, comes out, creates a little bit of space, and an easy finish for Taylor Korniak. Korniak having started the first game, coming off the bench for this one, and she gets her second career international goal. Scored on her debut last June against Colombia. Had a goal in the NWSL semi-final defeat against the Thorns last year. Another debut coming with uh, Taylor O'Brien getting set to come in. And 
Taylor O'Brien will be replacing Ava Collins when they make the change. But the US sensing they can get more goals here. Williams down the left side. Well, it was 4-0 three days ago. It was 5-0 when these teams met at She Believes Cup last year. And we've already seen an international debut for Eastern Suburbs' Devon Jackson. And now Jackson's Eastern Suburbs teammate Taylor O'Brien will also be coming in for a first international appearance. Won the league golden boot with 17 goals in the New Zealand National Championship last year. Was part of that grand final winning team along with Jackson. But because it's not a, an international window... They're digging deep and, and giving some players chances who have been impressive at the National League level. Players who might not usually have been given that opportunity. You mentioned what Ali Riley was saying about the fact that New Zealand is buzzing about the World Cup coming and we see that in, in terms of the attendances that the football yeah. firms have had. Breaking your attendance record twice in the course of a week yeah, and then just imagine when all the global fans start spilling into New Zealand and Australia. I mean, just not to mention the American fans that travel for World Cups. That ball into the middle from Swanson goes off Anna Green. Rose Laval, by the way, of course, with an assist on the Corniette goal. So two goals and an assist tonight for the captain a nice shift again for Rose Lavelle and just chatting with her yesterday you just get that enthusiasm that, that <laughs> comes through for just how much she loves playing the game and, and loves playing for this team but mm -hmm. also how much she wants to keep improving yeah. she realizes that she's not at the ceiling nowhere near it yet despite how good she is and is yeah. determined to continue that that growth yeah, you know, the, the question was posed to her in that Zoom call, like, what do you what do you want to get better at? And the first thing she says is breaking lines with my first touch, getting on the half turn. I mean, all these things we've seen in this game with that seam that we talked about in the midfield. And, um, and, and knowing that she can make a difference offensively in front of goal, getting myself some better positions, getting my shots, my final pass, more accurate. So... This constant growth mindset from one of the most creative players out there. And the thing that she added to her game early in her career, durability was always a question with Rose Lavelle. Because she would get injured. She was, her, her frame is smaller. And you're seeing her grow and grow as we talked about Mal Swanson into her game and box to box and mobility and staying healthy and all those things that have made her so good at this level. Taylor Korniak's second international goal. And both of them have come with her head. <laughs> she didn't even really have to get too far off the ground for that one. The smallest of jumps as the green continues to receive some treatment here. Well, a much better all-round display for the United States. Unbeaten now in 128 games against teams ranked outside the FIFA Top 15. This will be win number 121 in those games, dating all the way back to a loss against Mexico in World Cup qualifying in 2010. It will be a, a third win in a row after the first three-game losing streak since 1993. And at the moment, potentially back-to-back -back clean sheets. That one a few days ago was the first since the 4-0 win against Nigeria back on September the 3rd. This team that is usually so good defensively had gone five without a shutout. Stay with us for a full post-game show. Demarcus Beasley and Shannon Box alongside Sarah Walsh. Breaking things down. How nice is it to have that time too? To break things down. 
so fun. There might even be another goal coming. Rose Laval down the right side. Twisting and turning there. Throws it back towards Emily Sonnet. Little ball through for Huerta. Huerta's thinking she wants to get on. Well, they the, all seem to be in score. confident mood, don't yes, they? Yes, the scoring party. I, I mean, five is kind of the sweet spot against a nice turn by Huerta. Just can't come around it entirely. But five does seem to be the sweet spot against New Zealand. Naylor's ball away. And then it goes off Gabby Rennie. She just can't quite keep it in play. And Huerta was lucky to take that one quickly, but uh, nothing on there. For the OL Reign defender, 27th cap for her tonight. I mean, you, you look at what's next for New Zealand even, but when they get into their FIFA windows in February, they'll have the likes of Rhea Percival back, Anna Lee Longo, they're both fighting back from ACLs. Here's a chance for Mitch Purse who gets in around the back and Naylor makes the save. Great save by Naylor. Purse battling back and manages to win the throw and again they get to play home games yeah you, the you, world wants to come play them right now yeah you've got Rebecca Stott at Brighton CJ Bott at Leicester N neither of them were released Hannah Wilkinson Katie Bowen Claudia Bunge and a lot of players and and the good thing though with this even though they've had a lot of younger players the newest breaking forward here rolled into the path of Lynn Williams And here is the ball win by Christy Mewis. Lynn Williams getting forward. You can see the fatigue on that back line for New Zealand. They step. Lynn's on side. Misses that wide. She's going to want that one back. But you. The silver lining in not having those veteran players is you get a chance to look. I thought Grace Neville in, in her debut showed well at right back I thought Paige Satchel has done well you get some time for a player like Grace Jolla who's having a really good se season with Canberra United I mean opportunities to grow the pool for sure for New Zealand and a great reminder of what it takes at this stage at the highest level <laughs> and as they look to continue growing they do now have Wellington Phoenix in the W League yep. The first, the, the, the professional, first professional team into team. their second season. It's not going particularly well right now for Wellington Phoenix. They're on the bottom of the standings. But it does give that opportunity for players to play at home. Quite a stroke. Now Purse, the second half substitute appearance. There'll be a little bit of time to be added on here after that couple of injuries we've seen. Fox down the left side. Linking up with Williams. Korniak back for Fox. US playing it neatly here, and Rose Laval has it rolled into the path of Williams. Williams across goal. Swanson! It's a good stop once again from Naylor. That's three big saves she's made with her feet today. Or it could have been even worse for New Zealand. Williams turning this one back. Lavelle. Lovely ball through, and the turn from Swanson, and once again, Naylor has to make the save. As we're into five minutes being added on. Three great saves, back to back to back by Naylor. I mean, this one could be six, seven, eight, without those big saves, because those are good looks for the United States. Good sequence. She made a huge stop in the first half as well. Corner from the left, right foot delivery from Swanson in towards Korniak once again. Williams got a touch to it, flicked on by Purse, and then it drops down for Huerta. US asking for a corner. Couple of looks at goal now for Sofia Huerta. 
Yeah, and again, Korniak left no one marking her on that back post, able to keep it alive. Again, Williams keeps it alive, and then Puerta can't get over it. But things New Zealand will have six months to tighten up. Lavelle's corner in once again. I think Swanson felt she might have been awarded a penalty there as she tried to reach the ball and was impeded. Rose Laval had already got an assist from a corner with that ball in for Korniak before. Here's Lavelle once again down the right side. Has that little back heel. <laughs> she wanted Swanson to carry that run on. Have to start calling it the Lavelle. <laughs> Swanson's coming across, and there she just stops her run. You see in the middle of your screen. Just about midway through, the five minutes being added on here. Next up for the US, it's the She Believes Cup. Kicks off February 16th against Canada in Orlando. Then they'll move to Nashville to take on Japan February 19th, and it finishes off in Frisco, Texas, February 23rd against Brazil. Yeah, some decent tests there. Yeah, three good games. I mean, we've had some She Believes Cups that have been challenged by COVID or play, uh, teams, you know, in, in European qualifiers. And so this will be a good sequence of three games for the United States. Cook. Quite a down the right side. Full 90 at the back tonight for Alana Cook, having played 45 off the bench in game one. Sun it up towards halfway. Lavelle brings it down off the head of Ward. Little apology there from Rose Lavelle because that caught her full force <laughs> from close range. What will the main takeaways be tonight from Vlad Kalandinovsky? Oh, I think he's going to be placed, pleased with the speed of play, the energy of play, comparative to what we saw in that first game. The ability to, one of the things is they had been working on the runs in the box, the crosses in the box. You look at some of the balls played in. I think of that Ashley Hatch goal from Trinity Rodman yeah. with that first ball in. The success with Ashley Sanchez in the 10. Rose getting a little deeper. Thought Andy Sullivan had a good game. Get to play your young center backs together. And, and again, they understand that this isn't going to be a team that's going to cause them too many issues. But for a lot of these younger players, so much is dependent on time and repetition together. Swanson towards Mewis, and it comes for Lynn Williams. Back for Swanson. Williams. Now Huerta will have a crack at goal from distance. If he'd drawn it up, it's almost gone as he would have wanted in, in most areas of the pitch tonight. Despite losing Alex Morgan to an injury in warm-ups, they will have got a lot out of this game, despite the fact that the opposition wasn't at a standard to challenge them. Yeah, and most meaningful, honestly, is just the chance to replicate what the World Cup is going to be like. That rhythm, the feel, the locker rooms, the stadiums, all of it is going to be such a benefit because so many teams haven't been down here. Six months from now, the United States will open up their World Cup defense right here in Auckland. And 